Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. Krishna Lakaneni is a award-winning tech entrepreneur and Amazon best-selling author. His purpose is helping children in need through his nonprofit initiative, which is called Hope for One Million Kids. He is an executive producer of the soon-to-be-released Dreamer film. His digital agency, ROI Media Works, has helped position many businesses as, as niche market experts in local markets. Uh, attendees, if you have any questions in the course of Krishna's talk, would you please type them into the chat? And when there's a lull in Krishna's presentation, I will pose your questions to him. Krishna, are you ready to take it away? Yes, Roger. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. She's all yours. Off you go. Thank you. Um, thank you, everyone who uh, is here right now and sharing this moment with me. Uh, I'm blessed to be with you here, and I'm glad that uh, you showed up. Um, so today I'm going to share some of the, the deepest uh, research that I have done personally to shape my life uh, and to share some of the insights, like how I got here today. And I know living uh, dreams uh, means different for different people. Uh, but what I'm really looking at is what are the core fundamental uh, principles that can shape life as we know it. And even uh, I research at the quantum level in terms of learning from a lot of research papers that's been out there. So, you know, how can we find inspiration to stay motivated in our life, to keep going and always uh, stay, uh, staying true and connected to who we are? Um, so it's, it's all about the happy life, right? Like is a happy life an illusion or is it something really possible or does it exist somewhere? Uh, and I think the moment people start thinking it's somewhere in the future or it already happened, that's where most of them get wrong. Like it is right now because it, the past already happened. It only exists in our consciousness and the future, it didn't happen at all. And how do we shape our life in the future, the perfect and happiness and joy and everything that you wanted? And it's entirely possible to create that kind of life. So let's take a look at uh, Firefly. Um, they are beautiful. And I'm sure you all saw fireflies just floating around. You know, they, they blink at night and then just attract in the male and female. And the whole thing going on. And uh, when you look at that lifespan, it's very short, not even like in the human years. Um, so let's, let's think about that, how um, the nature created a certain elements and certain creatures, animals, and that includes us have a different lifespans and different way of living. Uh, for fireflies, it's, it's a little different. Uh, and let's look at butterflies. Uh, they're beautiful. They, they go one flower to another flower, uh, just uh, pull, taking the pollen from one flower and just, you know, creates that process in terms of, um, you know, the fruits and whatever we eat today. Uh, and again, it's a process involved. The nature is evolving on its own, but the butterfly is also playing a role there. And let's look at the bees and hornets. I mean, you know, we all <laughs> got got stung by a bee or hornet at some point in life. It's, it's painful, but they do have a role to play. You know, again, the bees taking the honey and collecting it, and then, you know, we get to eat it. Uh, but it's also at the same time, um, you know, pulling the flowers uh, to, to create the life itself. Uh, so as a hornets, you know, they, they eat the pests basically that uh, just sits on these flowers. Uh, yes, you know, if they sting, it's painful. But again, they have a role to fill in this life. So where do we fit in in this life cycle? As humans, uh, we probably stopped living the way we were meant to be long time ago. We all accustomed to, you know, materialistic life and the comforts. And where did we lose ourselves? Um, I honestly don't know the answer, but I was able to find out and connect to my true purpose, uh, but I'm hoping, you know, with this presentation, you will do the same as well. So understanding that flow, 
you know, if you look at uh, the Maichi rivers meeting the oceans, um, they do not have control over. They can correct the course of the action where they're going and then where they're meeting the ocean, but they always end up there. So again, that's a process and flow on its own. So, you know, we looked at the firefly, we looked at the butterfly, we looked at the plants, how they're growing and creating life itself and the rivers that's meeting in the oceans. So for humans, as we are, we have a flow uh, very similar to that, but somehow we got corrupted as we grow in the society. So how did he find out what's happening? It's, it's about uh, from the place of surrendering and not having control over, not having expectations over. Uh, I get it, it's, it's life and we have certain expectations and surrendering is hard. But the moment when you surround, surrender emotionally, physically, and mentally, that's when your true transformation happens. And it's so important that this happens in, in all of us. And for some of us from the pain and for some of us, they're just sitting in the sofa one day and they realize, I got to change my lifestyle. And, you know, in spiritual practices, some of the books quotes them as like different types of awakening process or enlightenment process. But it all starts from the surrendering. So where do we fit in all this? Like it's, you know, we're part of this universe. We're living on this tiny earth. Um, and what really fascinates me all the time is we know how, you know, the DNA works and how humans are made and, you know, different species work uh, and understanding how this earth's place in this universe. Um, but when you think of how did it even start it that way? We don't have answers. And that's the beauty of where we are in this universe and understanding that there are certain things we don't have control over. There are certain things we need to surrender, but also understanding in this body and soul how we experience life. Uh, and this is, this is the moment I really want you to sink in. Um, we don't have control over things, uh, even though we think we do, uh, we're not. Uh, so we are part of this um, cosmic cycles that are happening around us that's not even um, we are aware of. Like, you know, we're just at home sitting right now, just going through this presentation, probably eating a snack or something. But there are a lot of processes happening around us. And, the, you know, there is always fear when we want to surrender and when we want to move forward. Um, that comes naturally because we are humans and we have certain organs in our brain that trigger certain chemicals to think in certain ways that's not allowing us to move forward. But, you know, the uh, fight or flight response that's been there, uh, you know, in the mammals at the beginning stages, you know, because the lifestyle is different, you know, when you um, are outside hunting, you know, you might get killed. So the, you know, the longevity of life is smaller, but today we have a comfortable house and we, you know, drive nice cars and we got a food to eat. Um, but we still think the same way, the fear. So, you know, one, one example about the fear, right now we're sitting in a uh, chemical cocktail that's been exploding and moving uh, at uh, millions of miles per second. And we're, we are in it literally right now. And it's beautiful, but also it can create fear if you don't understand that. And how do we change that fear into something that's more tangible for us to self-growth and to be more sustainable and to create joy and the happiness in our life? So the reality of life is it's connected dots. So when you think about your past and if you think about your uh, future, you are always on the go and you're moving forward and there is a, a connection from one dot to another dot in many ways. You know, when you think of all these uh, dots or different moments in your life and different circumstances and different people that you run into, um, you're creating uh, a vibe and a, a momentum that's really for you and shaping your consciousness in terms of how you're moving forward in your life. So you can take any of these paths and end up where you meant to be, which we don't know, you know, like for rivers, we said uh, it's the oceans they, where they all join and, uh, you know, it's happiness afterwards. But for us, it's still unknown. But if you look at the quantum way of living, um, we don't know where we end up. 
But if you look at like, you know, Einstein's quantum principles and life as, as it is as a quantum uh, mechanics that's happening in real time in this body, we can literally exist uh, in a different timeline and a different uh, universe and they all coexist in the same time. And from the point of our personal view, we can look at only one thing and make sense of what it is from our consciousness uh, basis. So uh, imagine that um, you're predestined. Maybe you heard this multiple times. And if you're predestined, how do we create our life? Because you always end up the same place, no matter what we do. But the beauty is the predestined, uh, whatever that destiny is, uh, it is quantum itself as well. So the destiny is always moving based on where you're going and how you're connecting these dots from one thing to other and then moving forward. And I think it's important for us to understand that quantum uh, particles and how they exist and how we are interacting in this life. So I'm just going to, okay. So now let's bring that to our, our body and senses because uh, when we look at the quantum level, yes, everything can coexist at the same time and in any timelines, but how do we function as humans with our brain that we have? And it has to make sense for our brain to process in terms of our environment and our surroundings and uh, our body needs. And then the chemicals that our body releases, they're different from um, the emotional experience that we have. So it's, a complex um, and creative organism. And you know, if you are aware of uh, right brain and left brain, uh, there are uh, different ways how the information is being processed and we use your, our brain all the time. Uh, but somehow we are accustomed to uh, one side of um, the brain sometimes, like even for myself, being an engineer and brought up in India, um, it was always logical and I want to make sense of the things in terms of the depth and dimensions uh, until I realized, okay, you know, there is certain things that I'm missing in terms of arts and music and the creative side of me. But from all those discoveries um, and research that I have done, the idea always stems in the creative mind where the idea sits there and then the logical brain takes it over. How do we make this happen? So how do we use our brain to function from the subconscious mind point of view where you are creating your ideas that's really meant for you? And this is like where the destiny comes from. If you get an idea in your mind that doesn't exist before, there is a reason that came to your mind. And how do we make use of that moment to create our new reality? That's entirely possible. And, uh, you know, scientifically, you know, when we experience different emotions, uh, there is dopamine, there is, you know, endorphins, there are serotonins and oxytocins. Um, they are released in our mind. And again, uh, you know, in our brain, it's, it's a chemical cocktail again, and it's just creating all these uh, emotions for us to keep moving forward. Um, I remember reading somewhere like, you know, all the mammals have pretty much uh, the, the same uh, chemicals uh, released in their body when they're emotional. But when it comes to humans, we have an understanding of language processing where we get to make sense of what this is so we can communicate, we can learn and we can explore further. So, you know, there's monkey just, you know, if you give a banana, you know, it releases that uh, chemicals and it's happy and it's excited and you know it's dancing, um, but at the same time, if the monkey is uh, in the in the forest in the jungle, um, trying to find its own food, uh, you know, by smell or by looks, okay, there is food there, and every time it gets closer to uh, the the food or whatever it's interested in, these chemicals release more and more in quantity. What that means is there is a motivation from their mind that's happening without even they realizing it. So once you get to that point where, uh, you know, you had that banana or coconut in your hand, you have these chemicals released and you're happy. And these chemicals do exist, but they are only activated at certain times uh, when we feel emotionally connected to certain things. So think about when we are kids. Um, everybody remembers that moment when we had that ice cream with our parents or, you know, a good friend. 
um, you know, I, I can say like, if you close your eyes for a few seconds and say, what is your favorite ice cream or what is your favorite moment? Um, you can, you can clearly see that yourself and, you know, visualize that. So how do we understand that, um, you know, the mind in two different ways, uh, conscious mind and then the subconscious mind in terms of how we can leverage the subconscious mind to create the realities that we want using the mind that actually works and make decisions for us. And then the dangerous thing is our logical mind uh, always wants to reason and take it over, run with it. And uh, there, it can be financial gains and it can be something else more, uh, what is in it for me? But with the subconscious mind, you probably don't have that. What is that? Uh, what is in it for me? You know, it's not a financial game. It's not anything related to the physical activities at all. It's always connected with where you meant to be and what you need to know in that moment. So you are being happy and you're uh, being aware of the consciousness around you and you're experiencing that life. Um, so once we know like you know the nature how it works and we're being part of it and then understanding how uh you know our body and mind work uh what is my vision like how do i create my vision when i don't have clarity about how uh, my life is being transformed right now or is it even possible to create my own life uh and this is where uh you know live your dreams come from um, you know, from my research, um, like I went through a, a divorce uh, five years ago, that was my painful point because, you know, all my parents thought was, or the culture thought was, you know, you, you get good grades and you're a top student and you move abroad or have a comfortable life, get married. But when such and things happen, it triggers such and things in us that really corrects our course in terms of where we're supposed to go. And it might not happen for everybody, you know, in my case, uh, there is there's a pain and that correct my course and i have friends who are naturally born that way and connected that way um so when i uh, started this uh, research myself the first thing i discovered is um the japanese way of uh, ikigai uh, basically uh, you know it translates into the reason for being um and it's it's been used and translated by different life coaches in different formats, but I'm going to leave it as, as it, as it is um, just for you to give an idea in terms of how you look at your life from the Ikigai point of view. And with, um, and, and at the end of the day, it's, it's all about those habits. Uh, if you don't have uh, the habits in place, no matter what you're given, we are not going to really use it. And the habits with consistency, and, um, you know, earlier when we talked about surrender, uh, we doubt ourselves a lot in terms of what people would think. Uh, can I let go? Can I, uh, you know, we, don't, we want the safety. And I think when you don't uh, think about the safety and want to move forward and look life in a different way, that's when the true transformation happens. And that's when you start living your dreams. Uh, and it can be anything, you know, financially or success or whatever it is. Uh, but looking at this, I, I, you know, Ikigai, uh, you know, the life revolves around um, all these circles. And uh, you were never meant to be in one thing, but being aware of from uh, the point of where you're moving from one thing to the other. Uh, so, for example, uh, you know, what you really love, you know, there is a passion and there is a mission attached to it. And then um, what the world needs. So, you know, if you combine uh, what you really love and uh, what the world really needs, that becomes uh, your mission. You know, for me, uh, Hope for One Million Kids Foundation uh, is my mission. You know, it's uh, I'm delighted, full, fulfilled, uh, but broke. You know, it's entirely possible because you're not thinking uh, life from the financial standpoint of view, but more from the purpose standpoint of view. So when you combine uh, what the need, world needs uh, with the, the vacation and the, what you can get paid for, yeah, like, you know, you have the money coming in and uh, you, you know, you're a, probably a programmer making lots of money, you know, you're entertained and you're in the good circle and, uh, you know, it's purposeful, but there is still uh, the empty uh, spot, like you still feel lack of what is that I'm missing right now in life. 
Um, and, um, you know, I went through the same thing, basically being a programmer and entrepreneur for uh, more than 10 years, uh, I felt there was something missing in my life that resulted in, uh, you know, the, the painful process. And then my life shifted in different ways. So, you know, you, you have a profession and then you have a uh, passion and that it's pretty much like, you know, what, you, what you're good at. Like, you know, when you combine what you're good at and what you really love, you know, you're really satisfied, but feeling useless. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of us are really passionate about creating certain things, but we can't live with those things. You know, uh, I, I, I struggle understanding the life of, uh, um, like the authors and the arts uh, people, like they're very creative and very genuine and honest people, but there's not a lot of money they can make. And sometimes it gets harder, especially with COVID. I know a lot of artists are struggling right now because there's nothing they really can do about it, but we all need to survive. Um, and when you uh, find something that you can get paid for and what you're good at, and that becomes your profession. So, you know, you're comfortable, but bored and empty again. So it's all about finding the balance in terms of how do you manage different elements of your life and create a life that you get paid for what you do and you're purpose driven and you're passionate about your life and your glass is full all the time. And it's, impossible i hear sometimes but there's a possible way for everything when we put our mind to it and that's where my belief is and yes you know even i still work on certain aspects of my life right now but i'm moving forward and um, this has to be really proven to be working in my life so i know it's a serious topic but life is a gift what do we want like you know when i put this um, question to a lot of us. We, we think about the materialistic things again, that can be donuts, like, you know, if, uh, you know, craving for things that we want in our life because it makes us happy and uh, I'm comfortable and people usually applaud me for having that thing. Uh, and this is again, where you want to find the right people. I had to let go a lot of my cir circle that I don't understand or get along with just because they're not bad people. They're on their own journey. I love them and I pray for them. But again, where is that contributing to my personal growth? And yes, it's a little bit selfish, but again, I'm on my journey and I'm not ignoring them. They're still friends, but it's kind of like a quarantine them from the tribe that I want to be associated with. Um, so it's, it's all about the living consciously, what kind of tribe uh, you're building. And, uh, you know, when I was going through my tough period, um, it was like, do these people really exist? Like, you know, I'm really struggling. Who do I talk to? I can't go and tell people that, uh, you know, I'm struggling with uh, anxiety and I have a business and there are a lot of things at stake. And what would my kids think? And uh, what would my family think if I tell them, you know, I'm going through a divorce? So there's a lot of uncertainties, but you get to a point where you want to make a choice, you know, I'm going to give up on all of those and I'm not going to pay attention to it, but pay attention to it in the way that I want to process them to move forward myself in life and to be at a level that we can look at things differently. You know, this morning I, I shared something, you know, a lot of us look, look at life as a, a dimensional, you know, there is depth, there is money, there is, you know, width. Uh, but once you start looking at the beauty in a different way and you're not judging by any means or measurements, uh, you will truly discover yourself. And different cultures has a different way of doing it. Uh, like, you know, in, in Buddhism, you know, they, they live a different life and uh, they are accustomed to, you know, wake up at certain times and learn certain things. And there is no materialistic attachment to it. Um, and it's beautiful. But again, you know, is it realistically possible in this um, in this lifetime? Um, I'm not sure. It's it's uh, it depends on the culture. Again, like where you're in. Like you know, if you're in Western countries where you have bills to pay, and if you're in uh, you know in India or any Southeast Asian countries, you still have to do that. But there is a lot less burden. So which life is greater? Which life is lesser? It doesn't mean to be that way. It's about experiencing life as a as we experience and go through it. And, you know, being from India, like, you know, I used to see a lot of uh, yogis and monks and uh, 
they, again, they leave everything. And uh, I actually chatted with uh, some of these monks that travel from Himalayas and uh, all they do is they travel from one place to another and they just move on and they, you know, all they do is like meditate and whatnot. Um, what he told me is it's, it's a process and it's a living and it's never meant to be explored unless until your family is un- entirely okay with it. So taking permissions from the people around you to move forward, yes, that's one way to do it. And there are certain times they don't understand you, but again, that's, you know, in, in, in Indian culture, we call it karma. We are experiencing that in a way that we were meant to be. And, you know, the illusion of pain, but before I get there, I want to share something with you uh, with how different cultures portray life on its own, but they all have the core message in terms of how we understand about the people around us, you know, loving the people, loving uh, the things around us, and taking every moment in a sacred way and being respectful with it. Um, And um, looking at um, uh, illusion of pain, uh, think about this, uh, this tree, beautiful tree is, you know, is our life. And all these different colors that are hanging on there are uh, different life situations, pain, problems, goals, success, whatever that is. Um, they're all coming from the same tree. And at the end of the day, you know, we, we are the tree and we meant to experience these things to grow as uh, humans. So once we understand from the surrendering point of view and also at the quantum level, what the life is means to us and then how our brain works or even to the point manipulates things right in front of us, how do we find uh, my why? Like, how do I find my passion and purpose? And this is where uh, most, most people uh, struggle with because it's hard to find uh, because culturally you grow up in certain ways and you are put into that box where you need to think in that box and anything outside is not acceptable. Um, again, like how do you break those chains? Um, so I'm going to take a quick look at if they have um, any questions or anything like that. I just see some messages popping up. Roger, are you there? Yes, I'm here, but there are no questions. I'll, awesome. in- I'll interrupt you when there are. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so let's uh, do this uh, simple exercise, um, you know, finding about our purpose and um, there are different te- steps you can take here. Uh, I, I call it like the one thing exercise that I use personally many times. Uh, you know, we all want that one thing, you know, perfect happiness or perfect freedom uh, or the spirituality or the wealth or even like, you know, if you're younger, uh, what is my job is going to be? And if, you know, if you're thinking about getting married uh, or, you know, what is that relationship that I want to be in uh, and how that would look like to me? So, Finding the why, um, it's important to know how you can find it. And usually it comes from uh, your subconscious mind and from the people around you. And usually you can ask yourself certain questions. What is that um, that I'm really passionate about? And then you write three things down. And the reason I mentioned meditation, because you want your subconscious mind in action when you're doing these things. And then from that point, you narrate down to what your really core purpose is. And then how that core purpose aligns with your life goals. Uh, Like, what is my passion? And, you know, how much money do I want to make? And, you know, what is my spiritual journey would look like? And, you know, the the materialistic things too. Like, you know, if I'm traveling, where do I want to go? When do I want to go? And uh, these are all uh, coming from the point of from your passion and purpose and then turning into your life goals. Um, So even looking at the relationships, um, you know, like there's a lot of motivation and inspiration for us comes from the people around us, uh, mostly our family and friends. And um, we also forget that at the same time, sometimes we need to look inside ourselves and say, this is what motivates me and this is what's important to me. And having a conversation, uh, you know, with the family and making them understand what you're going through. Uh, And it's impossible for everybody to understand what you're going through. 
But again, um, they will help you either understand what you're going through for better, or they will totally deny it. So there, there are two things entirely possible. So the why exercise. Uh, so, you know, earlier I mentioned there are three things that you want to write down. So it's about, if it is about wealth, you know, I need to be wealthy. The next question you want to ask yourself is uh, why you need to be wealthy. So it's almost like playing a third person role, looking at you from the third person point of view and asking these questions. Okay, you know, once I'm wealthy, I can have all the freedom, I can travel and I have, you know, I can have all these cars and whatnot. And then, you know, change the question again. Okay, if it makes you, you know, feel happy and, uh, and having all these things excites you, um, why do you need to be wealthy? And once you get through these sequence of questions like seven or eight times, you will find an answer that something totally you haven't thought of in the first, uh, first one or two uh, steps. And always people get confused with um, excitement to inspiration and motivation. You know, inspiration is not excitement, but it can excite you when you know what it is. Um, and it's not also an expectation to have because my inspiration is this. I want to have certain expectations in life and this is how I want to live. But again, letting those expectations go frees you to inspire even more. So this is uh, an important slide here. Um, you know, when you rewatch or taking notes, um, make sure you do this exercise and you can change the wealth to relationship or financial freedom, like whatever that you want to focus on. And I think when it comes to uh, life, you know, we all think about uh, three core things. Um, you know, it's about food, shelter, and safety. And as long as these three are fulfilled in different ways, anything on top that we have is really a, a bonus. So uh, from those three points, um, like the food, shelter, and safety, you can uh, draw like a mind map, like, you know, in terms of food, what is my health style and what is my health goals are, you know, from the safety point of view, what is my safety aspects? Like, you know, do I have a house and, you know, it's, is my family safe? And, you know, it's the same with the other one too. So how did I find about all of this? Because it wasn't easier for me and I was in a lot of pain. So I was finding mentors. I was reaching out to coaches and then, you know, uh, one coach connected to me, other, and then uh, at the end, uh, it's, it's a cognitive therapy that really helped me to change my thought process and uh, shift that thinking to something more positive and more enlightening for me. And, you know, I don't know, like if my anxiety continued and, you know, if I got into depression going through that, um, I wouldn't know where I would have ended uh, from that process. But somehow these things showed up like one man from one mentor to another mentor. And also knowing this is like, you know, four or five years ago, um, I can tell the process got a lot easier and the mentors that showed up in my life and the people that changed my life showed up more naturally. And I don't have to go out and say like, I'm working on this and I need to find somebody to fix this. It wasn't like that anymore. It isn't like that anymore. It's more like they're finding or you're finding the mutual people that are interested that you can connect and you explore the life at a different level. So if you haven't, um, you know, ever considered like, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy and how that works, something to look at. Um, it's uh, definitely gives you that the psychological psychology behind it and the thought process behind it and how the shifts can be made. And the other thing that uh, really helped me to transform uh, my life is uh, neuro-linguistic programming. And um, it's fascinating how the life happens, but also thinking in terms of uh, being in the moment right now, uh, can we visualize how my 80-year-old self looks back at me and tells me this is how the life would be for you. And the neuro-linguistic programming, you know, it's, it's a name, but again, it's, uh, uh, you know, brain-based and there is language involved and how do you program your brain to create the life that you want? Um, 
and there are a lot of people who offer this. And, you know, personally for me, I did have, have a mentor. Uh, but again, uh, this can be different for you in terms of the process. But I'm sharing what worked for me personally to find out what my true journey is. Um, and also, I use the same process to look back, um, you know, the 15-year-old self uh, who was bullied and in pain and, you know, do I want to kill myself? I don't want to live. Excuse me. So those kind of, um, that kind of thought process happened with me as well. But somehow I'm here, but I can talk to my 15-year-old uh, self and, you know, forgive and tell different things that inspires uh, the 15 year old and you know uh, the, cutting to the, the quantum life basically you know that moment is happening somewhere and the 15 year old is living so communicating uh, authentically and with pure love always changes the outcomes so we we looked at a lot of things at the the quantum level and the soul level and what are the soul values and how do we ignite them to keep us on that path, you know, it's hard to stay on the path unless, you know, some of these habits becomes rituals and, you know, nothing can really change you. Um, but when you look at the process, you know the why and you understand life from the greater perspective and you're translating that life into something uh, more meaningful and living that day to day in joy and happiness and living your dreams. Uh, so, when we look at that soul values, uh, what are those and how do we ignite those soul values? Um, from, uh, you know, working with uh, mentors like Jack Canfield or reading books, uh, the power of gratitude uh, is immense. Um, it's like living every day and waking up knowing that this is your purpose and this is where you're meant to be and being grateful for it. Um, the, the amount of joy and happiness that comes with it, I can't really explain, but most often I see people complaining about things, you know, uh, it can be simple personal thing, you know, my car broke to, uh, you know, I don't have a penthouse to whatever that is. We look at things differently just because we custom culturally that way. But I ask you to take a step back and look at the things differently. Okay, your car broke down. There is a solution to it. Be grateful that you're alive. And there are a lot of things that you can be grateful for. You don't have a penthouse or millions of dollars in bank account. But again, you might have a beautiful family and good friend circle. And there are things that you can be grateful for. And then how the great gratitude piece uh, works with other emotions. And um, I, I call these uh, soul values of uh, humanity, um, you know, the five core values and, and power of kindness and compassion as well. Uh, it's, it's one of the pillars. And again, it creates gratitude. You know, yesterday I was in another presentation where Roy mentioned, you know, be, being kind, you know, do three to five good deeds every day and we all have our limits and we can do however more or less we like um, but always be in that mindset of being kind and compassionate about other people's needs and also understanding compassion for yourself and if somebody's unkind to you um, you know it doesn't feel good he said something she said something and then what if I don't take that like you know it's making me feel uh, miserable and I'm trying to look for approval from this person to feel happy about myself but do you see that like we're looking at some other person to make myself happy because they said something or they scolded or whatever happened you know there's an expectation and there's a different mindset and then all of a sudden you are barging with this person like you know i want to win um it's just not meant to be like that and you know and at the same time going through this process being compassionate about yourself yes that's happened but i know i'm a good person and i'm not accepting that whatever that is and i'm moving on and having this conversation uh, with the other person actually helps you both moving away from that barging point of view to a different place where you can communicate better. And again, um, it, it only happens when you're being kind and compassionate about other people's needs. 
And then the power of forgiveness. Um, and this is again, like a huge, huge effect, uh, had huge effect on my life. Uh, when bad things happen, we have hard time to let go of the things, forgive and move forward. We carry the baggage all the time. And when you really forgive somebody, even though the person is poking you and there are things happening around you that can drag you into that negativity, you wouldn't budge. You wouldn't move. You pay attention to it. Look at it from the point of a third person. This is happening. That is not meant for me. And I forgive this person who is causing this to me. And I'm not taking that pain in, if you notice. So when things happen beyond your circumstances, yes, we experience the pain, but also processing it in a way, uh, using uh, kindness, compassion, and forgiveness it, it goes a long way in many ways because you're not carrying that. And this is um, something else, like, you know, in terms of uh, empathy, we often forget, like even growing up as adults, um, we don't look at the things um, the same way as we used to see as kids. You know, when you wake up in the morning, you want to go out and play and, you know, it's all butterflies and uh, you're having lots of fun. But when we grew up and when we are put into this society or learn those habits to live, uh, you are forgetting who you are. And then uh, I, I notice this sometimes with the parents too. Like, you know, when kids are experimenting with something, parents usually intervene. No, this is not this way. You know, you want to do it this way. You know, basically changing the kid's understanding of how things can happen uh, but also looking at things um, empathetically, you know, taking a step back, you know, if somebody uh, is living a miserable life, you know, let them experience what they're going through, but also be there for this person. And then connecting from heart to heart, um, there is no expectations, there's no judgments, you know, can we love unconditionally the other person, other human being as he is or she is, or even the animals and the trees around us we experience bliss and there is nothing that can replace that. So uh, shifting the mindset, like how do we shift our mindset by knowing these core values exist and that there are core uh, way of how our brain works and then how the universe works and our purpose here, um, you know, uh, l looking at the things from uh, mind, body, and soul. Uh, so you really want to think at that 360 view of your life and, uh, you know, you can consider a Ikigai or whatever the principles or the religion offers a lot of material as well for you to help out. Uh, narrow down your core values in terms of what's life meant to you and then apply them from the point of mind, body and soul. And, you know, it's about being conscious in, in terms of, um, you know, how we behave and how we respond and uh, how we communicate and, you know, how we uh, even uh, living in this moment right now. And one of the things that really uh, worked for me is uh, from the point of mind, uh, the logical mind is a chatter mind and wants to take control over, make decisions for you. And even on the creative side, sometimes I don't know if it just gives up and goes with it. You know, I'm not a scientific person, but it's entirely possible your decisions, decisions are sometimes uh, biased and uh, you want to take a different look at life and then what you said or what you did. Um, so the meditation helped me a lot in terms of, uh, you know, doing some breathing exercises to using singing bowls. Um, it almost like vibrating at different frequencies. Uh, I found a different benefits that, uh, you know, in Indian culture and yogi culture, uh, there are chakras aligned in your body and when they're aligned you feel the bliss and basically they vibrate at different levels and how we can use uh, you know the the chanting and the singing balls uh, to align those chakras and what I found interesting is I go to church sometimes with my friends and uh, when they are praying and singing to the god I feel the same vibrations that I feel when I'm using my singing bowls so the methods could be different, but at the end of the day, it's aligning my mind, body, and soul to what it meant to be. Um, and 
the importance of body, like, you know, when you think about your consciousness, almost like a, an artificial intelligence programming sitting in a computer and, you, you know, your brain is like the processor that just maintain this whole body and working nonstop, whether uh, you're awake and whether you're sleeping. Um, so think about how we can take care of our body. And I know uh, we don't pay a lot of attention to it. We eat a lot of junk food um, and there is no filters in terms of um, how or what we do with our bodies. So be conscious around that. And uh, especially whatever we do uh, during the day and when we're living consciously and understanding and processing with our brain and knowing what's happening around us, when you're sleeping, your brain is basically processing all those memories and you know, looking at what is the permanent memory, where does it go and what is garbage that you don't need to be aware of and throw it away. So you know, sleep is uh, one of the important aspects of uh, you know, how we can take care of ourselves. Um, and you know, from the soul point of view, you know, when you do something good for somebody or when somebody did something good to you, it feels good, isn't it? It can be a simple thing, but it just lifts you up like that. So do something that's what's meant for your soul. So we looked at all these core values and how they can transform our life is again, fascinating. So think about, you know, putting that thread through the needle. If the thread is tangled on one side, how can it get through? Basically, you need to untangle all this gar garbage that you're carrying through, mostly emotional, to move forward. And I look at it differently too, not just a needle and thread. You know, imagine like there is a pipe where you are putting all your thoughts in there and it's being processed and they're coming out uh, on the other end. And your pipe is basically your storage unit and you're uh, putting a lot of garbage in it. And then eventually you wouldn't have a lot of a space for the good things that you want to experience in life, which is, you know, like joy and happiness. So all I ask you is look at what's happening at the personal level in terms of emotional life and what are those blockages that we have and how we can use these soul values, soul values to uh, clean ourselves. So, you know, if you're in pain, after meditation, look at yourself. Why I'm feeling that emotion and how is that connected to uh, my purpose? Uh, and once you stop thinking that way, it will guide you through. Okay, this pain is attached to the movement that's happened a year ago, two years ago. And you know, if you're dealing with people that remember things for life, uh, it's a problem. So there are certain things that happened and you want to move on. Um, but you want to clean all that garbage to move forward. So we looked at like the, the quantum size, uh, quantum way of living, and then what are the habits that can be transformed and what are some of these soul values that can help you to move forward. So how do you translate into, uh, you know, the list like day-to-day -day living? And this is the easy part, you know, once you uh, clean up the garbage and the emotional garbage and, and the life at the bigger scale, this stuff is easier, you know, like creating the to-do lists and, you know, the time management and taking risks, um, you know, having goals set and on also, you know, creating results for yourself. This is all the easy part, but you wouldn't get clarity about how to create this list and what is that you want in life unless you have a clear idea on your passion and purpose and how that's connected to your quantum life in terms of where your destiny is. So one of the habits, again, like, you know, the, the power of uh, perseverance and, and uh, we, we see a lot of people struggling and it's not fair that they're in that situation. That's my feeling, but that's for them, they're experiencing life differently from their point of view. And when we complain about like, you know, my car broke down or somebody didn't show up, Think about the other people, what they're going through and how they are experiencing life. Not from uh, the point of pity, but also looking at uh, how different your journey is and how fortunate you are to be in a different situation and how grateful you can be to be aware of these things and uh, being thankful and you know, even like you know, making a prayer when you experience these things uh, really helps as well. 
So uh, the, the time management, again, you know, you can use to-do lists and you can use mind maps, uh, pretty much whatever works. And uh, I don't know if you ever considered like a, a passion test, um, you know, do the passion test. And once you know how that translates or connects with your purpose and then translates into a realistic goal and where does, does it fit in in my day-to-day? -day? Like, am I reading a book in the 15 minutes in the morning or what am I doing before I'm going to bed? Am I sitting on my phone and I fall asleep? So you need to really look at connecting whatever you're doing in this uh, physical life to where you want to quantumly destined to. So also the other thing is um, taking a risk. Not a lot of us um, take risks. You know, we're, we have a job and we're comfortable and whatnot. Um, but again, um, we meant to live in this society in such a ways. And from what I noticed, the higher the risk you take, the higher the rewards. But again, when you're falling, you know, do you have a safe landing to uh, land onto so you can build again? So, you know, knowing a little bit of that calculator risks and, you know, playing by, by the rules and having the right professionals around you really helps you to take bigger risks. You know, having million dollars in the bank account today doesn't mean anything because it's just a money. It's just a number. If it doesn't fulfill you, if it's not doing anything for you, even uh, grow financially or spiritually, it's worthless. So this is where the mentors come in or the books or the movies, you know, it tells you a lot about life. Um, so how these people are on and find that tribe and take those risks. So, um, you know, when you're setting these goals, be conscious about, um, you know, setting smart goals, like, you know, specific, measurable, uh, actionable, uh, and relevant and timely. So, I want to have a career or I want to buy uh, a house with a beautiful view. It might not happen right away, but there can be a timeline attached to it. And then you want to be aware of what the timeline is and believing that it's possible. So if you're a practitioner of like in you know, a law of attraction, or if you watch the movie, The Secret, create those vision boards in terms of what you want in life and just create smart goals attached to it. And you take the baby steps towards where you want to go. You know, it might be a scary, audacious goal, but it's entirely possible. And also some people refer to this as a hero's journey in terms of from the physical materialistic point of view, where we live to connecting uh, ourselves spiritually at a much higher level by understanding what, what is happening around us uh, not just materialistically, but also from a spiritual point of view. So where did that journey take me? You know, this is, this is my parents. You know, I, I think I was a year old. I don't remember this picture at all. Uh, but that's where I started. Like, you know, I am from India and I had ambitions. And the 15-year-old 15 year old of me always wanted to have a comfortable life. It's not greedy. I just want to have a nice pair of clothes and a nice house to live. And that led me to where I am here today in Canada. I moved here 10 years ago. And then once um, I went through the painful process five years ago, um, I did a TEDx talk on my uh, hope for 1 million kids. You know, I found my purpose and I want to uh, work on my mission and encourage people to think at the bigger level, but also, um, you know, working with the nonprofits. And, you know, my TEDx was on hope for 1 million kids foundation. Um, so, you know, if you want to check it out, it's on YouTube, please be, feel free to check it out. And then that led me to uh, some of the, the books that I co-authored with people like Jack Canfield and Jay Abraham. Uh, and it has been an amazing journey in terms of where I was. And once I had the greater understanding of life at the quantum level, things changed significantly and they start happening way faster. And the type of people that are showing up in my life are totally different and at the different level. They're often spiritual. They're often heart-centered, uh, they're always willing to help, and they are associated with nonprofits in certain ways. So this will all happen for you in your own way, but just by being aware of this process really helps you. And uh, I, you know, the most recent project, we just announced this, and um, uh, I'm an executive producer on this uh, Dreamer documentary, along with some amazing people. And um, you, know, you, can, you can watch the trailer in a bit. But these people made a difference in their lives and then moved on, 
making a difference in other people's lives, whether through inspiration or space technologies, uh, whatever that is, uh, they became icons for some of us today. And, you know, if you remember Lisa Nicholas, you know, she was in the film, The Secret, all those years ago. Now she is in this film and she created her own legacy and she has her own schools. Um, so think about what is that bigger purpose for you and how we can move forward in your life. And, um, you know, here is uh, something for, for you dreamers. I, and I do have something for you to watch. Um, and uh, I, I really hope this uh, presentation uh, make you think in a bigger way, not just from the physical uh, moments that we live in to much bigger spiritual way. And I, I really hope it helps you in some ways. Krishna, thank you very much for sharing your profound words of wisdom. I feel, uh, I feel uh, that you've just opened up a big door and on the other side of that door is a rich and full life. So on behalf of EBN, I thank you for sharing those thoughts with us. Thank you so much. So I'm, we'll going, I'm going to uh, stop recording now. Yep. And uh, then you can play the, um, the trailer. Just tell me. If the